and in this video we continue looking at the articles based on the Retterton Range Rover murders and the people involved. The following articles are about the discovery of the bodies in the Range Rover and the farmers that found them. Villagers shattered by triple shootings on their doorstep from the Evening Echo from the 8th of the 12th 95. The peace and tranquility of Retterton has been shattered by the triple murder leaving residents shocked at the intrusion of gangland warfare into their sleepy village. Since farmer Peter Fearbold and friend Ken Jiggins found the three bodies yesterday morning, the village has been reeling at the horrific news. Retterden, home to 1,500 people, has just one shop and two pubs, and too many is no more than a cluster of homes, a primary school and a church alongside the busy A130. Parish councillor and worker at Oak Dean Stalls, Jackie Copsey, 50 of Meadow Road, said, Everybody's really shocked and surprised. This is just a little village. It's not the sort of place you expect these things to happen. Nothing exciting ever happens. It's just an ordinary village where everyday things go on. It is not a nice thing to have happen on your doorstep. Arthur Brazer, manager of the Bell Pub on the A130, said the village was a close-knit community where everybody knew each other but he believes the killers must have had some sort of knowledge of the area as the murder scene was so remote. Everybody's just amazed about it, especially being in such a quiet area. You don't get many problems around here. They must be local for knowing where that little hideaway is. And the landlord of the nearby wheat sheaf, Colin Stacy, 46, said, Everybody has been coming in today wanting to know who they are. Some people have been quite shocked. I feel sorry for the man who found them in the car. He said the night before it had been a normal Wednesday evening and there hadn't been anyone in the pub who was not a local. Villagers were today trying to rebuild their tranquil lives after the shocks of the past 24 hours. And from the same day, trio lured to their deaths. The three men found murdered in a Range Rover parked in a remote lane off the A130 were known villains from South Essex and could have been victims of a gangland killing. But police refused to comment this morning on speculation that the murders in the quiet village of Retterton are linked to the drug dealing connected with the death of teenager Leah Betts. One of the dead men was Patrick Tate, 37, of Gordon Road, Basildon, who had convictions for having cocaine with intent to supply and robbery. The others were Craig Rolf, 26, of Cowshaw Avenue, Chafford 100, and Anthony Tucker, 38, of High Road, Fobbin. Tucker was a former bodyguard to boxer Nigel Benn. Murder inquiry detectives are keeping an open mind on the possibility that the men, who were discovered at Workhouse Lane yesterday morning, were shot point-blank by someone from the criminal underworld. Detective Superintendent Ivan Dibby said, It's a possibility, but there are a number of other possibilities. This was no ordinary murder. These men were enticed to their deaths. But a police spokesman, when asked about allegations that the killings were connected to an ecstasy drugs ring, said, we are fully aware of the suggestions being made, but we have nothing new to say at this moment. The killings came just two months after a man dressed in a clown suit shot a patient at St Andrew's Hospital, Bellericchi, in another gangland action. The bodies were found by a farmer and his friend as they drove to the snow-covered track near Wickford. The two men in the front were upright with gunshot wounds to the head. The third man was slumped across the back seat. There were no tracks from any other vehicle or footprints leading away from the scene which is metres away from the busy A130. One of the dead men was the known owner of the metallic blue Range Rover, though he was not the registered owner. It was bought from the Eastern Garage at Five Bells Vange about a month ago and had the registration F44 NPE. Tate was hunted by police for over a year after a daring escape from Bellericke Court on a motorcycle in 1988. He was eventually tracked down in Gibraltar and returned to the country. Police have not recovered the weapon used to shoot the men who were in casual clothes and were not wearing seatbelts. Mr Dibley, who was running the investigation with 30 officers, said at a press conference last night, We still don't know the motive, but this may become clearer when we have positively identified these men. The window behind the front passenger seat was broken and shotgun cartridges were found near the scene. The dead men had not been tied or restrained with ropes. There was no sign of a struggle. Mr Dibley added, Whoever killed these three people is clearly a very dangerous man. Until we catch him, I am concerned that he is still at large. Horror on farm track as three men are shot in a Range Rover. Three men found dead in a Range Rover are believed to be drug dealers executed by contract killers, it was revealed last night. 
Detectives think they were lured into an ambush and shot dead as they sat in their vehicle in an Essex country lane. They suspect the killings were the result of a dispute amongst drug dealers. All three men are believed to be Essex criminals and the country's coast is among the favourite routes for drug smuggling. The trio were found slumped in their seats shortly before 8am yesterday in the village of Retterdon near Chelmsford by two men who were going to feed the pheasants. All three victims aged between 20 and 40 had been blasted at point blank range in the back of the head with a shotgun. Detective Superintendent Ivan Dibley was leading the murder hunt said they have yet to be formally identified but were thought to be known criminals. This is not an ordinary murder by anyone's standards, he said. It looks as if they have been enticed down there or maybe an arrangement has been made for them to be down there. He said he was unsure whether more than one person was responsible and police believe the men were shot where they sat, two in the front seat and one in the back. Forensic experts searched for clues and a weapon under a fresh fall of snow in the undergrowth surrounding the lane, which leads off the A130 Chelmsford to South End Road. Bricklayer Kenneth Jiggins and his friend farmer Peter Fearbold stumbled on the scene as they went to feed Mr Fearbold's pheasants. Mr Jiggins, 47, from Southwood and Ferris said, I got out the car to tap on the window to ask them to move it. There was no response. I called back to Peter and said, There's two men in here. They've been shot and looks like they're dead. There was blood on their faces and chests. Mr. Fearbold, 44, or owns nearby White House Farm, noticed a third man in the back seat. It was fairly obvious what had happened, he said. It was pretty shocking. For all the world, it looked like these people were asleep in their car. It wasn't until you looked closer you could see they'd been shot. The Range Rover with the body still inside was transported by truck from the scene to Broomfield Hospital Mortuary in Chelmsford. Last night the bodies were still in the car. They were being examined by Home Office pathologist Dr Paula Lannis. Gangland clue to men shot dead in Range Rover. Three men were shot in the head as they sat in their car after apparently being lured to a remote farm track in Essex. The men thought to be criminals were found shortly before 8am yesterday. A farmer and his friend were going to feed their pheasants at White House Farm Resident near Chelmsford when they discovered the blue seven-year-old Range Rover with the men slumped inside. The identities of the men all believed to come from South Essex and details of their previous convictions were not being disclosed. Detective Superintendent Dibley, who is leading the investigation into what is believed to be a gangland killing, said, It is not an ordinary murder. It just appears they were enticed to go down the lane or an arrangement was made for them to be there. Shotgun cartridges were found in the snow near the car, which was parked 250 yards down Workhouse Lane. The track runs from the main south end to Chelmsford Road to a private fishing lake. Police believe the men were shot at point-blank range in the car. The murderer, possibly with an accomplice, is then understood to have driven away. We don't know if we are looking for one perpetrator or two, Mr Dibley said. We also don't know whether somebody arrived in the same vehicle as the victims or came in their own car. The track in which a hijacked lorry was dumped several years ago was so narrow that police were unable to take the bodies from the Range Rover to carry out a post-mortem examination. Instead, the men, all white and aged between 20 and 40, were left inside the car. The vehicle was covered with green tarpaulin, taken to Southwood and Ferris for examination six hours after the bodies were found. Peter Fearbold, the farmer who found the bodies, and his friend Ken Jiggins of Bricklayer, thought the Range Rover belonged to fishermen when they saw it blocking the track. We were driving down the farm track to feed the birds, Mr Jiggins, 44, said. The Range Rover was parked close to the locked gate, which leads to the lake. We thought that perhaps it was the fishermen, but they've all got their own keys. I got out, walked up to the Range Rover and tapped on the window and told them to move it. There was no response. I looked in, then walked back to Peter and told him there were two people there who, by the looks of it, had been shot dead. Peter then got out the car, walked up to the vehicle. He looked in and said, there was one in the back as well. We got hold of the police and told them what we had seen. People living nearby said they'd heard nothing on Wednesday night or early yesterday morning. Ron Fax, owner of Retton Hall, said, We are shooting people. It would not be unusual to hear guns at night. People go lamping for rabbits and foxes. We're into shotguns, but we heard nothing. Oh.